Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palitska International Neil Artisan Educator here and today we are going to paint an absolutely amazing design. I have really enjoyed it because it's a little bit more advanced so it was more challenging and that's the stuff which I like. How about we preview of this beautiful butterfly in here? I even more enjoy it because I could show you the desire brush and it is absolutely amazing for those detail at work. I hope you will learn step by step how to paint those kind of butterflies as well and please let me know as well if you would like to see more of those advanced tutorial. I know they are a little bit harder uh, but I think they are just much prettier. They are more time consuming but they are worth all the time spent on them. So let's start. So we have been doing recently kind of easy design and I thought it would be nice to show you something a little bit uh, more advanced. So we are going to paint some butterfly and a marble. Perfect autumn colors. So uh, to start with I want to do the background first and we are going to use the 187 which is light latte and I really like this color. Uh, so let's do it messy, like really messy. Um, and then we are going to use a drop of the blue scrub. Blue scrub is a nail dehydrator. Um, any kind of alcohol solution uh, will be nice. And what I'm doing is I'm really just smudging those places with the alcohol. Just to create a nice marble. Okay, that's plenty for this one. Cook it in. No. Second one. Cook it in. A <laughs> really fun design to do it. It looks nice on its own even. Uh, just those kind of marble parts. So you can see it if I feel like I've got too heavy I'm just adding more alcohol into it and then cleaning my brush. Cook it in. Then ideally you want to do a second layer um, and um, I actually find it it is better to do it on top of the top coat. Like apply the top coat And then cook it in. So that will give us some dimension. Again, okay, cook it in. Okay, and then do a second layer. And this time I'm going to also add the drop of the black. So I'm just picking up the black. Alcohol. So we've got some places which are slightly more pigmented and then black. With the black you want to be very careful so you don't have too much of it. Just a wee shadows and then cook it. Same on this one. Okay, 
just like a wee crux. And you can really see them because we have applied those top coat like they are on the next layer. And then cook it. Oh, this one is done. And okay, we've got this one to do. So the last one. And that's plenty. Top coat on all of them and then we can start painting the butterfly. We could add some gold flakes, like even this one, um, to make this design even more interesting. I want to keep it kind of plain for this one, just because the butterfly is going to be really, really rich. So top coat. And then another one. Now, for this part, most of you would probably ask, why don't you use the matte top coat? I really prefer those, scratch, uh, to, those buffed surface. Uh, so I can, I can get a nicer results uh, and also um, smoothing out um, the surface and it's nicer to paint on it. So for the butterfly we are going to need a drop of the red, drop of the blue, drop of the yellow and I'm using a Color Plus gels for it. And of course lots of white which is a paint on French gel. So picking up some scoop of the white, scoop of the yellow, second scoop of the yellow, red. I'm mixing straight away red with the yellow to get a nice orange. I just hide it, my brush from the sunlight because this room is so sunny. <laughs> Drop more yellow. Okay, so I've got orange. And then we want some blue with the red to create a purple. Okay, so this is a dark purple, but I'm going to lighten it up. So drop more blue and then white. So I got a nice purple. So that's all the colors which we are going to need for the butterfly. I just put them away. Okay, so what we've got in here, we've got this tip, which is ready. This tip, which is also ready. And the farm where we miss our butterfly. So for the thumbnail, I'm going to quickly buff it the surface. I'm keeping it on the side, I don't want to get dust on my gels. So 
So by bathing it, we get a really beautiful, perfect surface for painting. But you need to remember to use a kind of old buffer. Uh, don't use brand new buffers because then they will create lots of scratches and the paint can uh, get stuck in those scratches. So you really don't want that. I'm going to clean the tip and then it is all ready for painting. So for the large part of the butterfly, I'm going to use the larger brush just because it's quicker. And I'm picking up the white. So we're starting with the splash of the color. So we've got one wing on the top and here. We need to imagine where the body is going to be. So that's one wing. I mean, obviously, the, the more beautiful designs, um, the more time consuming it is going to be. So after I have indicated where the design is coming from, I can make it larger because I can see I can easily still squeeze the body here. So I want this wing to be bigger. Then we are going to paint the wing which is here on the bottom. So we'll leave the gap in there, that will be easier for you to know where the butterfly body is going to be and also that you've got separate wing in here. Pretty decent wink as well. Take your time on distributing the gel. Like you wanted it to be nice and smooth so the next layer are going to look nice. Going to make it even bigger. And then behind, there is another pair of the wings. So again, leave the gap. And this wing is going to be hardly visible, like somewhere on the back in here. It's a little bit higher. And then another wing in here. So again, leave the gap so you know that there is a wing. Okay, so this way we have painted the background for our butterfly. Even bigger. And at this stage, I want to cure it so I don't damage it. So give it a cure and then swap for a small brush so we can paint the body because once we've got the body, is the easiest way to, um, to paint the butterfly. You know the proportion of it and all the stuff. Let's look at the picture here again, just so you know where to go. Okay, so we've got the body like little head and the rest of the body. And you guys asked me a good question as well, like, so when I was painting the tiger, I think, so the tiger was painted just from the head, that's it was wonky a little bit. If I'm painting like really advanced design, then I'm looking at the picture. So I quite like to search like in Google different, um, different pictures, like if it would be a Disney or if it would be like on uh, some animals and things like that, and then copy it from the picture. Uh, so this way it's easier to work out on the design. But obviously now I'm using this butterfly, which I've got it here as a guide. Okay, 
everything. So I'm painting and I, the brush I'm using uh, for this one is the new uh, range of the brushes. So that's the smaller one. And I love it for the detail work. Like it's much shorter than the D-liner and it's perfect for like those really uh, delicate work. So in order to do the antennas, I have got almost no product on my brush and I'm just starting with the dot and then painting and so it's a very thin line dot and then join that in very delicate line and then the next step is to start outlining some wings so i'm starting where the wings are the thickest because it's easier to control my brush and get used to the painting uh, so here we are can pick up the bigger blob and then outlining it. And now clean my brush again, like clean, just, just roll it on the mixing palette. And then this part, I wanted it to be nice and thin. So I'm starting and I'm, I didn't pick up any product. I've got only product on my brush, uh, not on my brush, on the tip. And I'm just dragging this product to get a really nice and thin line. Okay, it's hardly visible, but that's what you want. And then make it nice and rounded shape. So nice and rounded shape. A little bit thicker here. Fix the curve. And then on the bottom, we are going to paint some black parts here as well. So nice and black. Again, I'm starting where it's thicker. Give it a wee wave and then come down again. Okay, so this brush is very, very precise, which make painting those kind of design much easier. Here I've got the sweet triangle. So I'm just going to paint it nice and black and here and triangle so we can indicate the bottom wing okay so this way i can see where the bottom wing is join it to the top and then give it a flash cure okay just pick up the wipe I like to clean it and once it's flash cured, flash cured is just a couple seconds cure, we can move on into the next part of this design. So kind of almost in the middle of the wing, we are going to paint another triangle and like try to break the shapes into easy shapes. <laughs> so what I mean by that is if you break them into the easy shape, you can do it. Uh, if they are harder shapes, like uh, then it is more difficult to, to paint it. But I'm always breaking it into a simple ones. Okay, so I have done triangle and then a wee line. Then my next step is to paint something on the bottom wings. And uh, you want to indicate the shape of it first. So make it a nice shape. And then after that, you are going to do like a wave. So we are painting some wave. And the closer to the bottom you are, the larger the wave is going to be. And the easiest way, again, use the triangle as a guide. So paint the triangle. And then make it a little bit longer for a nicer shape. Join it in on the bottom. So I'm cleaning my brush just by rolling it on the mixing palette. And then adding what I've got left in the brush. So hardly visible line. Okay, then the next one. So that's the wing behind and we are going to do exactly the same. So just indicate it first and then do the wave. Okay. 
and give it a flash cure. I suggest you always flash cure it uh, in between the shapes uh, just because if something goes wrong then you can um, wipe it off and you've got uh, good, uh, good stuff again. So here I'm going to paint exactly the same on the top. Slightly thicker. Then very thin. And a sweet triangle here. So there is part of the wing which is not visible. And then thicken up this triangle here. Okay, clean my brush because we are going to work on the detail again. So nice point on the brush. And let's do some detail. So we want to paint the legs. And also the, the mouth, like I don't know, the stuff, the, the rolling stuff. Okay, so that's the rolling stuff and some legs, very thin legs, hardly visible, but they are there. That's too much product, you could see the bulk. Okay, so we've got a tiny wee legs. And then it's a time to add the detail into the wavy parts. And just like some rounded shape around it. Same in here. You guys, I've got really no product almost on my brush. After we have painted that, I can paint a kind of eye, I call it eye. Outline it a little bit thicker. Then again, a little bit thicker. And then very thin. Straight away, I can do some parting here. And paint a part of this eye there. and a little parting. Let's do some parting on the top wings as well. So I've got very little product in there. Like almost nothing. Very delicate light line. You cannot almost see them, but they are there. And that's that's like, uh, yeah, you can see them. So this brush is amazing for like those kind of details. I love it. Um, I love painting like those kind of more advanced designs. 
They are really time consuming, but they look amazing once they're finished. And that's something where you spend lots of time on the design. Okay, give it a flash cure. And I can start adding a little bit of color and then another detail. So I'm cleaning my brush again. And for that, I'm going also to add the drop of the top coat on my mixing palette. So drop of the top coat. I prefer painting actually, like when it comes to ex like, I don't know, let's like talk about like really detailed, detailed, detailed nail art. I would use either the color plus gels because they are really, so paint on, I use paint on French as a white and then foil design as a black, uh, but they've got separate white and black uh, as well. But I use them because they work almost like a printer. So you've got five colors, blue, blue, red, yellow, uh, white and black. And with these colors, you can create any kind of color, but they've got perfect like um, pigmentation. They match better than the gel polish. The gel polish is sometimes more slidey and runny and they've got less inhibition layers so it's easier to control this product so for like really advanced designs i would use uh, i would use those kind of uh, um, uh, gels to paint them sorry guys and uh, let's start doing those coloring so i'm picking up the purple because i want to add some purple and a top coat just so it's not too heavy like they really pigmented so i don't want them to be too too heavy. Okay, so this part is going to be purple. And then the same part on the top is going to be purple. Like fade it in. The eye is going to be purple as well. And I'm picking up now darker purple. And then clean my brush and we are going to pick up those yellow. Again, top cotton there. So it's an extremely small drop of the product. Look at it, guys, like almost no product. And now I'm going to start fading it in. Top coat. Basically, I'm using, uh, in some parts, I'm using kind of dirty brush, I would say, to apply the color. And that's plenty. You don't need lots of color. Even if it's not visible, when we do so many hair strokes, it eventually uh, becomes uh, visible. Just very washed yellow. And then orange. So again, lots of top coat in there. And like doing lots of lots of brush motions. Just so it looks like it's faded. And here we're almost doing an ombre with a lot of strokes of the brush. Okay, same here. That's too highly pigmented. So I have picked up only top coat. Only top coat on my brush. And I'm just brushing away this color. Drop more. And 
I don't want to rush this design because usually what I'm doing is I'm painting nice design on my own where I can take my time. And then when I'm starting uh, doing the tutorial, it's like I don't want to waste your time. Like, I mean, I know it sounds bad, like, but I don't want to take too long time. And then I feel like the design didn't turn out as nice. So I'm really not going to rush with this one at all. So a drop of orange again with the top coat and just give it a wash. On the bottom I've got orange and then tiny bit of yellow. And then give it a flash cure again. So a couple seconds, clean the brush in between and we move on into another details. So this is a hard part um, because we are going to paint with like almost no black but we need to give those I would say furry look to it. So I've got very little product you, you wouldn't have to do it this detail like I mean it looks okay even now but I just want to make it, it even prettier okay so those four in there Or you can see it in the camera, which is awesome. It's just checking the camera view. Same here. So it's lots of like a very small lines, almost dots. Look uh, how much product I've got on my brush. Like you, you cannot really see it. I've got any product on my brush and that gives always the nicest results. Like, cause even if it looks, there is nothing, there is plenty, believe me guys. So you can see it, almost nothing there. Okay, same, we need to give those furry look in here. And start where you've got your black, like where you've got the bulk. So here I've got bulk of the product and I can just work it out. Because this way you wouldn't do too much. Same in here. I'm starting where I've got the bulk and I'm just brushing it. That gives a really nice effect. Okay, I, I don't want to overdo it, uh, the butterfly. That will be almost plenty, so we will just add a tiny bit white detail and then that's this design will be finished. So cook it in and then white detail. So I'm cleaning my brush really well. And for dots, I don't like to use the brush um, when I'm painting very quick. So here I'm painting very slow and I can still use my brush because I'm not going to bend the tip of it. Like it's really important. Once we break a tip of the brush, uh, it's, it's just, it can go to being like really, I mean, for maybe quick salon work, yes, uh, you could still use it, uh, but you wouldn't be able to use it for like detail work. So 
I have picked up the product and now I have removed the excess of it on my mixing plate. Like I'm, I'm quite perfect. The <laughs> cameraman is showing like, yes, it is in a camera. So quite often I kind of do those strokes to even straighten it so I can go like, look how little product is there. There we are. So I can really pick up like the, the tileage and like tiniest, tiniest wee lines. And so with those tiniest wee lines, I'm just painting the detail, more detail. Let's give him a sparkle in the eye. Okay. And the last dots. And then that's this butterfly finish. And you can see it, guys. How nice and pretty and cute he is. We could also put a bit of shadow underneath of his body so we could really see his flying. Maybe let's do that as well. So I'm just closing my brush. I really wanted it to last me a long time. And then clean my brush where we used white, mix it with the black, clean it again. Yes, I'm fussy. Um, now I, could, I couldn't use it straight away. So I've got black top coat and now we are going to do a little bit of shadow in here. Just underneath. And then give it a cook. Apply the top coat and then that's the design finish. I actually sometimes don't like to apply the top coat. Uh, I feel like it should be matte because when the shine reflects, we can lose sometimes the detail. Um, so when the designs are so um, so small and so much detail going on there. I'm not the fan of the shiny top coat, like, because uh, you can see it how nice it is now. And then, like, it doesn't reflect the light as much. Uh, so it's easier to see all those, um, all those details. And then when we apply the top coat, uh, you can see the shine line and sometimes it's spoiling the effect. Well, let's apply the top coat. Also, I'm really pretty, pretty pleased you guys to share those videos uh, as well so we can get a little bit more views, uh, especially on those uh, designs where I'm spending like a longer time and I want to show you something a bit more advanced. But that's the butterfly which we have created today. I'm um, just save you more watching. So look at, uh, I save you a bit of time and we'll cure it later, but look at the detail. So his cute face and then the wings. Yes, yeah, sending you lots of glittery hacks and bye for now.